In this example, we're going to solve the equations involving fractions. Okay, we're going to start with this one. Now, why work with fractions? It takes so much longer. Why don't we just get rid of them? And we can do that by multiplying by the least common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to find my least common denominator. I'm going to put a little one under here. And then I have 4, 1, and 10. My least common denominator between 4, 1, and 10, um, I think is 20. But why don't we just the easiest way? 4 times 10, 40. So much easier. You don't have to um, think about it too much. Then you have 40, right? I'm multiplying 40 times everything, okay? I'm going to put a little 1 there so you can see what we're doing. We're going to do 40 times 1 divided by 4, okay? 40 times 1 is 40 divided by 4 gives you 10y, okay? 40 times 5, I forgot that number. What is that? 200 divided by 1, just 200. Okay, 40 times 1 is 40, divided by 10 is 4y. That's it. No more fractions. Then what do we do? We simply solve for y. Minus 10 on both sides. 10y, sorry. Busy with 200 equals negative 6y. Divide by 200. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. Divide by 6. I wish you would have been saying, wait a minute, why should you divide it by 200? It should be divided by 6. Because we need to divide by the number next to the variable. Okay. So by negative 6. Excellent. That cancels. Then I have 200 divided by negative 6. Well, we need to check. Let's divide both by 2. And we have 200 divided by 2. It's 100. And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. I don't think you can divide that no more. So your answer is y equals negative 100 over 3. And that's it. If you are the person that likes to work with your fractions, it's fine. The only difference is that it might take a little bit longer because you will have the case where you will need to find the least common denominator between the two fractions when you're adding or subtracting. But there's no problem. You should still arrive to the same answer. Now let's see this example right here. I'm going to start, instead of getting rid of the fraction, because I only have one fraction. Here I had two. I only have one. I don't think it's going to be that much work. So I'm going to keep my fraction in this case. So I'm going to start by subtracting negative 6 to both sides. 2 thirds x equals negative 2 minus 6, you add and keep the sign, negative 8. Okay, so you have different ways to move forward in this example. Is whichever you like best. You have a choice. Sometimes I just do one and then the other time I just do another. Who knows? So I can... Put a little one over to here and cross multiply. So I'm going to do 2x times 1 gives me 2x. 3 times a times negative a gives me negative 24. Divide both sides by 2. x equals negative 12. One way. I can say, well, this is a multiplication. Opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm just going to divide by 2 thirds. Right? This cancel, giving you where x equals negative a divided by 2 thirds. Well, if you remember, you cannot divide fractions. You got to turn them into multiplication. So this is x equals negative a times 3 times 2. Negative a times 3 is 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. Well, I'm running out of space. x equals negative 12. That's a negative 12 right there. In this case, okay, it's saying it's basically this one, but I think one step less and with a fancy word. You want to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 over 2. Okay. 
this cancels, giving you x equals negative 24 over 2, which is negative 12. Same answer, three small different ways. You have a choice. To me, I think this is the easiest, but it's look at which one you like the, be the more, the best, the best, and keep that way. Okay? Answer for example one, answer for example two.